In the darker days of web application development, we essentially had two options for working with dependencies. The first was that we could put all of the dependencies in a directory of our application and then use them from there. This worked, but could cause our application to balloon in size. The other option was to rely on shared dependencies installed on the server using something like Pear. Because we didn't control these, we would occasionally have to debug problems because someone installed a different version of the library than what the application was developed against. And Lord help you if you had your application installed on the server with other applications, because each might need a different version of the same package. This was such a common occurrence, it was called dependency hell. Thankfully, as a community, we no longer have to worry about dependency hell because we can use Composer to solve all of these problems for us. In this video, we'll discuss what Composer is, some of its features, and how to integrate it with your project today. Hello developers, and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren, and on this channel, we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos when they're published, and make sure you follow me at Scott Keck Warren on phpc.social and Twitter. Now, Composer is a tool for managing dependencies in PHP. It allows us to declare the dependencies that our project requires, and it will automatically determine all of the dependencies of our dependencies. It manages these dependencies on a per project basis, so we severely reduce the chance we're going to have a dependency hell situation on our hands. Once we've installed our dependencies locally, Composer will lock those dependencies into a specific version so we can install the same versions on any number of computers easily. When we need to update a package, a simple command will upgrade all of the dependencies. Composer also provides a built-in autoloader, so we don't need to require once all the classes we need for each request. Composer itself comes as a self-contained PAR file, so it's very portable. We just need one of the supported versions of PHP, and we can easily add it to most systems. Exact installation instructions are available on the Composer website. There are essentially two options for how we can install Composer. The first is that we can install the PAR file into our current project. The other option is we can install it globally into our system's path. Locally is nice because it can then be included in our source code management and be at the same level for all developers and servers. Global is nice because it reduces the total size of our repository, and it's one less thing that we have to worry about, and it's accessible anywhere in our system. For the examples in this video, we'll assume that the composer.par file is located at the root of our project directory. Let's create a project and use Composer to install a couple of dependencies. Composer uses package names to uniquely identify a dependency. It's comprised of a vendor name and a project name separated by a slash. Let's add PHP unit to our project so we can start on the right foot doing some test-driven development. To install this, we're going to use the require command to tell Composer we're going to add a dependency to our project. Then we'll use the dev switch to tell it we're installing a development-only dependency. When we do this, it won't get installed in our production environment. Now, this isn't strictly a requirement, but it can reduce the attack surface of our servers. Next, we're going to pass the vendor and package name. In this case, it's PHP unit slash PHP unit. And then finally, we're going to specify a semantic version string to indicate what version we want to use. We should generally be using the caret at the start, as that will keep us inside the same major version. After we hit enter, Composer will perform several actions. First, it will add PHP unit to our composer.json file. It will create the file if it doesn't already exist. Secondly, it will determine the correct version of PHP unit to install along with its dependency. It will then write this information to the composer.lock file. Then it will download and install the libraries to the project's vendor directory. And finally, it will create an autoload.php file. The composer.json and composer.lock files should be included in your source code management, but not the vendor directory. The vendor directory will be recreated using the composer.lock files information. It's important to know that the composer.lock file contains the versions of the packages that any other computer will use for our project and not the composer.json. We can update the composer.json all we want, but unless we also update the lock file, it won't do anything. Another thing to mention before we move on is that inside the vendor directory are several important things. The first is the autoload.php file, which we can include in our project to provide autoloading of the files our project needs as they're requested. 
The next is the bin directory. This contains the executable versions of any dependencies we've downloaded using Composer. For example, the PHP unit executable is located here. It also contains directories for each vendor we're pulling libraries for. Inside those directories will be more directories for each project from that vendor. Let's add our second dependency because we don't yet have a package that will be installed in our production environment. Let's install monolog to our project so we can log some data. Notice that this command doesn't have the dev argument. This indicates it's not a development-only requirement. Once we've run that command, let's look at our composer.json file so we can see how it was affected. See how we now have separate keys for each type of dependency? Now that we have Composer set up, it's time to move this project into production. I've already spun up a virtual machine with PHP 8.1 installed and cloned the project to that virtual machine. Now all we're going to do is use the install command to install our dependencies. There are a lot of options for this. To start, we're just going to use the basic install command without any options. In this process, it uses the composer.lock file to download the correct versions of all of our dependencies to the server. Did you notice that it installed PHP unit? This is less than ideal from a security standpoint. Now, PHP unit isn't a problem, but we might have a debug bar installed that we don't want in production. To prevent this, we'll use the no dev switch to install only items in the require key in our composer.json file. In production, we should also use the optimize autoloader switch to have Composer optimize its autoloader for a production environment. This means that it creates a class map between the files in our system and their name, so it doesn't have to search the file system when we need a class loaded. This time when we run the command, there's no PHP unit. More after this word from our sponsor. When you're in production, a thousand things can go wrong. You could deploy a bug in your latest release. Your background jobs can silently fail. Someone could trip over the network cable at your data center. And this all comes back to you. You need to know when bad things happen and be able to respond to them quickly. That's why we built HoneyBadger. It's easy to install HoneyBadger in your back-end applications and front-end JavaScript. It only takes a few minutes of configuration and you'll have monitoring done. That's because we hook into popular web frameworks, job systems, and the browser, so that when any of them crash, we can automatically let you know. We ping your application from our global fleet of servers to let you know about problems with connectivity, latency, and SSL certificates. And we monitor your recurring jobs to see if any of them stop recurring. When there's a problem, we alert your team using the tools you already use. We can create issues in GitHub, Jira, and other issue trackers, and send notifications via Slack, PagerDuty, or other channels. When you click through, you'll be taken to detailed information on the error. You'll see things like request parameters, headers, user information, and the backtrace. Click on any line of the backtrace to view it in GitHub, Bitbucket, or your local editor. When you fix a problem, just mark it resolved and follow up with the affected user. That's HoneyBadger. We're the monitoring tool for web developers who'd rather be, well, developing. Now that we have Composer tracking our dependencies, it's important to talk about updating those dependencies. Our composer.lock file is going to keep us locked to a specific version of each dependency. This is great for consistency, but bad because we're not getting security or bug fixes. Thankfully, Composer has got our back. When we specified our semantic version string for each of our packages, we were telling Composer which version range was acceptable for use. Now, ideally, we should lock ourselves into the current major version of each package. Packages shouldn't be breaking anything inside of a major version, so it should be a painless upgrade to the most current version. That doesn't always happen, so it's important to test upgrades before they're put into production. To upgrade our dependencies, we're going to use the update command. This will cause Composer to check our dependencies for updates. After this process has completed, the composer.lock file will be updated to reflect the new versions, which we can then push to our source control management and then download the changes to all of the servers, maybe using a tool like Deployer. On projects that are in active development, I run this command at least once a month to make sure we're not slipping too far behind and keeping up to date on security patches. I'll generally run it on the first working day of the month as part of my start of the month checklist. If I hear about a security issue in the PHP ecosystem, I'll also run it partway through the month as well. Now you might be wondering how Composer knows how to find our dependencies. 
The answer to that question is simple. It uses a lookup service to know about the packages that can be used. Packagist is the main Composer repository, and it allows library developers to submit their packages for inclusion in the repository. Then Packagist tells Composer where to find the source code. In our next video, we'll create a package and get it listed on Packagist. Make sure you subscribe so you're notified when it's available. Now it's best practice to create a lot of small classes for applications, so we can keep our application speedy and easy to maintain. In the days before auto-loading was common, we would have to manually add require once calls for all of the classes that we needed in a file. Thankfully, PHP 5.1 added support to declare a function to automatically load files as classes were requested. Composer comes with an autoloader, so we don't need to write one ourselves. To use it, we just need to add a require vendor autoload.php to our application, and it will do the rest for the files located in the vendor directory. For our files, we'll have to tell it how to find the classes. This is done by adding an autoload object to our composer.json file that tells the autoloader how to map our classes to the directory structure. Generally, our package name gets mapped to the source directory, and then each directory is its own namespace. Now we can attempt to use a class name Scott Values Object, name, first name, and the autoloader will attempt to load the file source, name, first name.php for this class. As a recap, Composer is a powerful tool in the PHP ecosystem. It helps maintain dependencies in our projects and provides auto-loading. I hope you enjoyed our video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like as it does help others find us. Are there topics you would like to see us cover? Let us know in the comments below or send me a message on phpc.social and Twitter at Scott Keck Warren. We would love to hear how we can help you and it always brightens my day when I hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading. Thank you.